preserving us, for preserving us, for standing by us all these years. Thank you for another year when we could gather together to study at your feet. Almighty God, please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that during this year's gathering, you will do for us more than we dare expect. And you will empower us to restore every ability of ours also to work for you even beyond your own expectations. Please, Lord, we pray that at the end of it all, your name and your name alone will be glorified and through us, few as we are, weak as we may be, you will bring revival to all the nations that we represent so that your name and your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, my Father and my God, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let somebody shout another hallelujah. Uh, my text will be Ephesians chapter 3, from verse 20 to 21. Ephesians 3, from verse 20 to 21. And as you are opening your Bibles, I want to tell you I deeply appreciate you. We love you. We appreciate the work that God is doing through you in the nations that you are placing at the moment. My prayer is that God will continue to use you more abundantly than ever before and that he will also continue to bless you even beyond your widest dreams. In the mighty name of Jesus. My prayer is that each time I hear concerning any of you, it will be good news. And there will never, never be any evil news concerning any of you or your families or the churches that the Almighty God has put you in charge of. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us or to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end Amen Our topic this year our theme this year as you know already is beyond expectations. We are serving a God whose name is Jehovah El Shaddai. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. Genesis 17 verse 1. The God who is more than enough. Whatever he does, he does it generously, beyond our expectations. For example, in John chapter 6 from verse 5 to 13, John 6, 5 to 13, when he decided to feed the people with five loaves of bread and two fishes, he fed them so well that when everybody said, no, we have had enough, there were still 12 baskets left over. That's it. In John chapter 2, from verse 1 to 11, John 2 from verse 1 to 11, when they lacked wine in that wedding in Canaan of Galilee, not only did he provide them with more wine than they could drink, he gave them the very best. He gave them beyond their widest expectations. The, the, the MC said, a man will bring forth the best wine at the beginning. But in this particular wedding, you have brought forth the wine that is super, better than any wine that they have ever tasted. When he does anything, 
it does it beyond expectation. In, in Psalm 23, verse 5, Psalm 23, verse 5, he, he said, not only have you prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies, that one alone <laughs> should tell you that he does things beyond expectations. I mean, he could have prepared a table before me in the presence of my friends, or at least in a neutral ground, but to show his almightiness. He does it in the presence of my enemies. In other words, when he wants to feed me, he will first of all paralyze my enemies and I ask them to come and watch his own enjoy. Then he went on to say, and thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Not only was my cup full, it runs over. So when he anoints, the anointing will overflow. When he decides to give Sarah, sorry, Hannah, a child, when Anna asked for a child in 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 9 to 20, 1 Samuel 1 from verse 9 to 20, Anna asked for just one boy. But he ended up with five extra children. Because God always exceeds our expectations. In Second Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 15, Second Chronicles 1, 6 to 15, all that Solomon asked for was wisdom and understanding. God says, is that all? He said, that's all I needed. He said, I give you an addition. You will get wisdom. You will get understanding. You will get wealth like nobody ever before you or after you. I will give you long life. I will give you peace. Always beyond expectations. But then he now turns to you. I said, all right, you are my child. <laughs> I'm Jehovah El Shaddai. I always give beyond expectations. I always anoint beyond expectations. He said, you, my children, you be like that. Like father, like son. John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, verse 12, he said, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do. He's saying, my son, my daughter, I heal the sick, you will heal more. I raise the dead, you will raise more. I made the lame to walk, you will do more. You will do much more work than I did. One will say, how can that be? Well, if you go through the scriptures, you'll find out what he promised. He can more than supply the ability to do. For example, in Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 to 34, Mark 5, 25 to 34, a woman touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. But he was inside that garment. But in Acts chapter 19 from verse 11 to 12, Acts 19 from verse 11 to 12, Paul didn't have to be inside a garment for somebody to get a healing. He sent his handkerchiefs and aprons on an errand to heal, to set captives free. In Acts chapter 5, from verse 14 to 16, Acts 5, 14 to 16, it wasn't even the apron now, or the garment, or Peter, that was healing the sick. It was his shadow. His shadow. Beloved, the almighty God expects you to go far, far beyond him in achievements, in soul winning, in healing the sick, in setting captives free, in raising the dead. That power 
is embedded in you throughout his lifetime. The Bible tells us that the number of brethren that Jesus left behind was 500. But do you know Peter preached just one sermon on the day of Pentecost and won 3,000 souls in one day. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. You can read it from verse 1 to 41. Acts 2, 1 to 41. He preached one sermon and won 3,000 souls. He preached a second sermon in Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And how many souls? Read Acts chapter 4 verse 4. Acts 4 verse 4. Five additional thousand souls. Five thousand souls. The Lord throughout his lifetime left behind 500 brethren. Peter within two sermons moved on to 8,000 souls. What are you waiting for? The almighty God has endued you with the power to go beyond your widest expectations. The expectations of the people concerning Philip was that he would be just an ordinary deacon serving table. Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7. Acts is 1 to 7. He was chosen to be someone. Who, what would what we call him today? Anosha. But then he went to Samaria. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5 to 8. Acts 8, 5 to 8. All he was supposed to be doing was serving table. But he brought joy to a whole city. What are you waiting for? The Almighty God is with you. He's ready to use you beyond expectations. And according to the text that I read to you, he said he would do exceedingly abundantly above all you are able to ask or think. According to the power that is already resident in you. If you are born again, brother, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you already have enough power to be a witness to the whole world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Acts 1 verse 8 is already written. So if you are not moving, if you are not doing beyond expectations, the fault is yours, not that of the Almighty God. Or oh, if there's anything wrong, maybe <laughs> you haven't really been baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire, you can ask God today. Or maybe you are already waxing cold, you're already becoming lukewarm, you can ask the Almighty God for revival today. Or maybe you didn't even have faith. And remember, anything that is not of faith is sin. So you can go to God and repent. Or if you are thinking, no, maybe I can't really do all this thing you are saying. Are you calling God a liar? The one who, who said in his word that you can, he can do for you exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Is he a liar? Have you forgotten that forever, oh Lord, thy word is settled? I'm going to pray for you now. And you have to go to the almighty God and cry to him and ask him that he will send down fire of the Holy Spirit upon you, that you will now get up and begin to do mighty things for the Almighty God. After all, you know God, and they that do know their God shall do exploits. Let 
I just pray. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. I want to give you all glory and honor for your children. I want to thank you that thus far you have helped us. I want to thank you because I know you are not tired of helping us. I want to thank you because I know forever, oh Lord, that word is settled. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please revive your children. Set them on fire again for you. And from today onward, Lord, let them begin to do mighty exploits for you beyond their widest dreams and expectations so that within the next one year, there will be revival in every city, every town, every nation where your children are located. And I will begin to hear wonderful good news concerning them. And we will give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Well, let somebody shout another hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you go to God in prayer now and ask him that like the day of Pentecost, he will send out his fire upon you. And he will grant your request. God bless you.